Now's a good time to talk about aerial technology, drones, and the recently announced DJI Phantom 4. Let's talk about the DJI Phantom 4 because when they released this, it caught my attention and this was just released a day or two ago and that's the reason why I wanted to get this video out and I wanted to get some discussion going around this. Um, if you're a big DJI or a drone type user, I'd like to hear from you. Post some comments below and let's get some discussion going around this. I'm curious to know what you think. Um, so just a few quick notables on the DJI Phantom 4. Um, to begin with, it's got some optical sensors up front, which I find really interesting. Now, these sensors will help to avoid collision. Now, this was something I was thinking about uh, when I was doing a lot of research and development. If we could develop a drone that was big enough to carry, say, 50 to 100 pounds, and we had GPS technology, which we do today, and we also had collision avoidance, which is what DJI is putting into the Phantom 4, which I think is awesome, then if we could plug coordinates in and send our drones to grocery stores and have that grocery store put on, say, a gallon of milk, uh, some bread, some water, soda, whatever you want, and have it fly back, think about that, right? That's, that's an awesome concept. And it's something I've been, you know, I floated out there some, uh, to some uh, uh, capital uh, investment groups, and uh, they, they definitely have an interest in it. Um, and I have a lot of thoughts wrapped around that, but let's stay on point here. So they do have the optical sensors up front. It's supposed to help avoid uh, collisions. And so when it's flying along, anything that's within two and a half feet to 49 feet, it will detect. And it will try to make its way around it. If it's not able to make its way around it, it's gonna sit there and hover for the pilot to get it you know, around that obstacle, which is, I think that's really cool because I've hit a lot of trees and a lot of different things with this old uh, Phantom and it's still alive, which is nice, but it would be nice to have those sensors built in. Active track, okay, so active track is really interesting to me and it's not that the follow me function is incredibly new to drones, relatively speaking, but what makes this different is that the active track is leveraging the sensors on the front and not just um, a device that you hold with you and GPS because that type of technology, um, although it's somewhat effective, it's not very accurate and it's kind of slow to react. So with the sensors on the front, um, I suspect we're going to get a much better reaction when it's doing active tracking. So I think that's going to be really cool to kind of see that in action and, and see how it works out. Um, tap fly. So tap fly is kind of interesting to me if you're using a smartphone or a tablet and uh, DJI has an application that goes along with this uh, Phantom 4 that allows you to tap uh, so it's got the screen uh, and it, the screen is showing what the camera is showing you and you can tap where you want the drone to go and it will fly there and while it's flying there it will avoid obstacles which I think is really kind of cool. Um, to me though I, I do like the controller but I, you know I think it's kind of interesting to be able to use a, a smartphone or a tablet to enable flight so we'll see where that goes sport mode. Now I find this kind of interesting because even with the the older the older Phantoms um, I always thought wow they they can go fast right they they accelerate very quick and I don't know the speed of the 1.1 but um, you know it's fun to get out there with your, if you're with other people and you want to kind of do some racing and some sporting kind of events this will go up to 45 miles an hour <laughs> which which I think is kind of crazy but it's cool so at any rate 45 miles an hour um, the battery. Now DJI is saying that this will go up to 28 minutes. So uh, now that's not 28 minutes flying at 45 miles an hour, but if you're flying relatively modest, they're saying you could get up to 28 minutes, which I think is kind of cool. Now keep in mind with these older batteries on the Phantom 1.1, you know, you, maybe eight, nine minutes, maybe 10. Uh, realistically, when I flew it, uh, you know, I, I would feel seven or eight was pretty good. And so, you know, you had battery sensors on there that an audible would go out and it would tell you it's going to run low and down it comes. So at 28 minutes, I think that's promising. I'm really curious to know how much the extra batteries cost. 
because on the 1.1 they were relatively cheap and as the versions got higher, I think with the 2 and the 3, uh, you can get 15 minutes and I think 20 minutes, but the batteries cost a lot more. So with this, we'll just have to wait and see. The other thing is the video on this. So the video can shoot 4K at 24 frames, 25, or 30 frames which I think is awesome. So you can go 30 frames at 4K with the camera on the 4, which is awesome. Uh, it'll do 1080p at 24, 25, 30, 48, 50, 60, and also 120. So it can do 1080p at 120 frames a second, which I think is awesome for slow-mo, a lot of action shots. I'm sure that's why they threw it in. And on the photo side, it'll do JPEG and RAW, which I think is cool. So. Um, those are the highlights of the notes that I picked up here. It looks like it's going to sell. Uh, I always like how they do this. For $1,399, let's just call it $1,400. They're not fooling anyone, so it's going to sell for $1,400. That seems a little pricey to me, but then again, um, you know, I think the other drones, the more recent ones, have sold around $1,200, 12 to $1,300, so this is around $1,400. It's a bit more, but you're getting a lot more technology out of it. And it looks like you can pre-order today, as of this filming, uh, up, up through March 15th, and you can pre-order through DJI.com or Apple.com. I find it's kind of interesting that they partnered up with Apple. I think it's good on DJI's part, but uh, if you pre-order through either one of those, um, it sounds like they'll, they'll be available in the stores on the 15th as well. And they're saying um, on March 23rd, it'll be available in other retail locations that you could pre-order. But the other retail locations should not get their deliveries until April 1st. That's if I understand all this correctly, and I, I think I do. So these are some of the notes. Hopefully that helps you out. So I'm really curious to know what the drone technology community is thinking about this. I think it's, it's kind of cool. Um, you know, on the cost at $1,400, I don't think that's too bad considering I think the three, again, I, I don't have those notes in front of me, but I want to say it's around $1,200. So if you don't already have a drone, and you're looking to get one, you know, 1400 that next step up, but you're getting some additional features with it. As for me, um, I like my, my 1.1, but, um, you know, being able to avoid obstacles and, and the activity tracker, the follow me function that the fort introduces, uh, that's pretty enticing to me. My biggest concern is if you're out there doing an activity and it's following you, um, I'm curious to know how the user knows that the battery is getting ready to die. Now, what I've always done with the 1.1 is you put this sensor on the battery, and as I mentioned, I think I have it around here. Um, let me see if I've got it so I can just show it to you if I, yeah, right here. So this, this is a little sensor. Let me see if I can get it closer to the camera. Yeah, kind of see that. So this has a little timer on it, and uh, it makes a loud, audible uh, sound when the battery starts to run low. So even if it's, you know, it could be far away from you, and, and you can hear it, um, unless you're like at a train station, which you wouldn't be flying around train stations. No. So yeah, it, it seems to work well. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and let's get a dis discussion going. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, because when you give it a thumbs up, it's going to help other people see the video and, again, get that discussion going. Uh, let me know your thoughts around drone technology and about the FCC as well. I mean, I don't know if you think that they're overstepping their bounds, or maybe they're not as involved as what they should be. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so. It's called The Real World. Uh, most of the videos that I post are, are about photography and technology. That's more of my space. But you never know what you might get. That's the reason why it's called The Real World. I post videos about automotive maintenance and homeownership. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.